Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm gonna to talk about Intel's NUC 12 Enthusiast Kit and show you all the pros and cons of this little but powerful computer. So Intel decided to start a partnership with Magix, which is the company that creates a bunch of software, including Vegas Pro, Acid Pro, Photo Story, Video X Pro, and many more. NUCs have notoriously been primarily used as small gaming rigs, but Intel wanted to show people that NUCs can also be used as powerful workstation computers too. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of these PCs, loaded up some software, and pushed it as far as I could as I would my own custom built computer. So let's get started by talking about what a NUC is. NUC, and you see, stands for Next Unit of Computing. Intel's been making NUCs for about 10 years now, and this specific model I'll be showing you is the NUC 12 Enthusiast Kit. Intel is currently on version 13 of the NUC line, so if you like the specs of the 12, then you'll really like the specs of the 13. What make NUCs special is that they use the latest and greatest processors, RAM, and GPUs inside an extremely small case. Usually the type of hardware is equivalent to laptop hardware, so you'll be getting mobile versions of these PC parts, but nowadays mobile hardware is almost identical in specs compared to the desktop counterparts. Now let's go over some physical features. The average NUC computers are very compact, and this NUC 12 fits that description well. I still think it's crazy how they're able to fit all of this hardware inside this small computer. This NUC 12 enthusiast kit came in a slick black box full of logos, info, and specs all over it. If you open it up, you can see the computer sitting in a cushion slot on the top. Then it has an additional compartment, which I can pull out a small drawer and find the computer stand, power cord, and power brick there. The computer can operate either lying down flat on its little rubber feet or snugly standing up inside the stand, but no matter which way you choose, you will have great airflow regardless. If you're like me, you'll immediately notice how big this power brick is. It's almost the same size as the computer itself, but when you realize all the parts that are in this computer, it makes sense why it needs a monstrous 16.9 amp and 330 watt power supply. On the front of the NUC at the top, we'll see a power button which has LEDs around it, a couple of status lights, a high-speed SD card reader, a bigger hard drive status light, a USB-C port, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port, and two USB-3 ports, one of them being a constant power port. The front plastic panel also is graded for airflow. On the top, we have a case panel which has a thin yet transparent center square that allows for a bright LED light to shine through. By default, Intel adds this skull logo. The logo can be removed and you can create and place any logo you want in that square. For example, I printed out and put a little Scrapyard Films logo and it looks awesome. On the bottom of the NUC, you'll see a panel which lists all the specs of this PC as well as a bunch of graded spots for airflow. If you look closely, you can see two big fans pointing downward there too. On the top and bottom, you'll see pointed sides which end up creating a hexagon shape for the entire NUC. The top and bottom have plenty of graded air spots to provide even, you guessed it, airflow. And lastly, on the back, we have the rest of the connections which are four USB 3 ports, a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port, a USB-C port, another 3.5 millimeter auxiliary and optical port, an HDMI port, two display ports, and finally the power port. So let's go ahead and talk about the specs. This is the NUC 12 Enthusiast Kit, also known as Serpent Canyon. There are quite a few versions of these NUCs and the differences are usually minor, like i5, i7, or i9 processors with different GPUs in them. So kind of mix and match to make different models. You can find a list of them on Intel's website and go over the different specs. But the specs of this NUC in particular are pretty dang good. We have a 12th gen i7 12700H processor, a built-in Intel Arc 730M graphics card with 12 gigs of VRAM. This graphics card is the equivalent of an RTX 3060 minus the ray tracing that the RTX cards have. 32 gigs of RAM, a Kingston Fury Renegade 1TB Gen 4 NVMe SSD, this one came with Windows 11 on it as well. A 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port with built-in Wi-Fi 6 card for ultra-fast wired or wireless internet. I went ahead and put a list together of some pros and cons because believe it or not, there are a few cons. Let's start with the pros. It's compact in size. It comes with an optional stand. The fans are very quiet. It has expandable storage for hard drive and memory, which can support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. It has a high-end processor and a really good graphics card, super fast wired internet and Wi-Fi internet, a high-speed SD card slot built in, which is convenient for videographers like me and photographers, and it has its own NUC Studio software, which lets you control a ton of features, including the fans, LEDs, and many more things. Now let's talk about the cons. First one is it has no built-in speakers, so you will have to get a headset or additional desk speakers. 
The Windows version it came with is Windows 11 Home Edition, which isn't too big of a deal for most users. The difference between Home and Pro versions is that the Home version lacks BitLocker disk encryption, remote desktop support, group policy management, and a few other advanced security and business tools. So Home should work out just fine for the average person. I did personally have to reinstall Windows right when I turned on the NUC. It came pre-installed with Windows, but during the setup, something got corrupted and I just had to reset the PC. And then after that, it worked just fine. I used Windows built-in reset this PC option, and that did the trick. It is a massive power brick, and that can be inconvenient to mount or hide somewhere. And then there are some limitations of ARC graphics cards compared to NVIDIA. ARCs are newer, they have little glitches here, sometimes they don't support older games, little things like that. I did notice a few little miscellaneous odd things like the ARC drivers saying they're up to date when they are actually not, and I had to manually download the latest versions when the software wasn't allowing you to. And for me personally, after resetting the PC, I was not able to easily install the NUC Studio software. I had to try a lot of times to finally get it to install. But once I did, it worked perfectly. Now let's talk about the price. The cost of the NUC 12 models range around about a thousand bucks. You can find some models in limited supply for cheaper, like around 800 on sites like B&H, or Amazon has some stripped down versions with no RAM or hard drives that are cheaper, and you just buy those things separately. Other models, like the Extreme version, can go for around maybe 1400 bucks or so. The newer models that are available are the NUC 13s. They have newer processors, RAM, GPUs inside of them, and they can start around the $1,200 to $1,300 range and kind of go up from there. Now for the conclusion. What did I think about this computer? Well, I really liked it. For the price, you get some really awesome specs put together in a very compact unit. It's quiet, it's cool, it's a workhorse, it lets you game and utilize software to a full potential. I don't really notice any difference between my desktop custom build and this one. It's an awesome alternative if you don't want to build your own computer or have a big tower sitting around somewhere. I'll definitely be using this computer for my gaming and video editing needs when I'm not able to be near my main computer. So that's going to officially wrap up this review of Intel's NUC 12 Enthusiast Kit. And that wraps it up for this video. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next one.